What's up, you guys? So I'm here with a new video today, and I'm finally back uh, here to do a discussion on ABCs and why I don't feel ABCs are the problem currently in this game. And I'm going to get into that because I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash for that. But anyway, just for a quick update, you guys, uh, the reason why I haven't been doing videos for a while, uh, my mom was actually in the hospital uh, for almost a week. She just came home yesterday. You guys sent me a lot of support, a lot of prayers, and I really do appreciate it. She went through surgery. She, you know, she got through it. The surgery was a success. And now she's back and now she's home resting. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful to all you uh, who, you know, sent your prayers, sent your well wishes. It really means a lot uh, to me and to her and to my family in general. So thank you you guys so much like i say you guys are the best people around so thank you guys for that so we're just waiting you know uh recovery you know takes a while but it you know it'll happen now on to this uh topic at hand we're here to talk about abc's the freaking alphabet and why i feel that as good as the deck is, I don't feel that it's a problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because a lot of people are complaining, saying this deck is ridiculous, saying, you know, I don't want to play anymore because of this deck. And I just don't understand that. And the reason why I say that is because I have the ABC cards. The You know, everyone picked up the structure decks and was like, you know, this guy is going to be, you know, amazing. And he truly is. If you guys see it, I've heard that a lot of the mirror matches are pretty crazy. They're not that fun to play. And, you know, whoever can get to Buster and Hanger first usually wins. Honestly, I think Hanger is an absolutely amazing card. I, I got to be honest. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The fact that you, you know, you search, you summon, you equip from deck. I mean, it really doesn't get much better than that. But the reason why I say I don't feel that this deck is a problem is because we've encountered a lot more powerful decks. And I'll just bring up two decks all out of the blue just to prove a point. And that was Dragon Rulers and Spellbooks. Now, granted, those decks played very differently. But let's face it, Dragon Rulers were pretty much unopposed if you weren't playing Evil Sworn or or, or spell books. Spell books are pretty much unopposed because they would just summon Jalgen with fate and you just lose the game. And they just keep cycling you each turn once uh, judgment resolve. So I feel that if we can play in formats like that, where it was pretty much two to three steady decks, we can play in this format. Now, what do we know about the ABCs? We know that they all work together to make the big guy. Now, that's obvious. The big guy is amazing. He can banish a card during either player's turn, during your opponent's turn. He can, you know, he can deconstruct and become A, B, and C again, which I think is amazing. That gives you a lot of rank four utility. Um, what do we know about the little guys? The little guys all have equip effects to save each other. Uh, core saves you. What is it from? Uh, what is it? Uh, saves you from uh, monster effects. Yeah, monster effects. Drake uh, saves you from uh, spells, and C saves you from traps. Okay, so basically, they make it so you're pretty much safe from pretty much whatever you fear at the moment. Now, by themselves, they're they're pretty they're okay they're decent cards I feel a assault core obviously being nineteen has a you know has the advantage now the thing is what what are people really struggling with with these cards it's the fact that they all have graveyard effects they all have graveyard effects when they leave the board and they don't miss timing and everything I I haven't seen them miss timing during anything but assault core can add from uh, your graveyard to your hand. C can special one from your hand, and B, which is my personal favorite, can search any from the deck. So basically, you're always going to get to ABC if you resolve Union Hanger. You're always going to, you know, have a way to get to these cards. Now, the real, I guess, concern would be Union Hanger. This card is absolutely amazing. Like I said, it pretty much guarantees you ABC Buster Dragon depending on how you open, especially if you open with a Photon Thrasher. I put Thrasher here because it is in the deck, and it's a starter card. What I really like about Thrasher is you can summon it. Your opponent doesn't know whether they're going to back C or not because I've summoned Thrasher before. The opponent doesn't max C and then you continue to go off or you can Thrasher they max C and you can sometimes you can just attack with Thrasher because it can attack if you don't have another monster so 2100 is nothing to laugh at so people are also concerned because of the other support cards now the gadgets the gadgets are cool they float you know you summon them they let you special summon another level 4 machine uh, you can special summon another gadget from your deck. So basically, the versatility of these is that they help you make your rank 4s and they float, which is cool. But I mean, that's about it. The only thing you can add in if you want to be spicy is Galaxy Soldier because it can make Infinity, uh, Nova Infinity. But other than that, we're dealing with cards that are not that hard to get around. Valor is an amazing card. If people do not know, Effect Valor is amazing right now. It's really good against the ABC Dragon, really good against, you know, just everything. Because they summon that, they equip, like whatever, you know, they do their thing, you know, they make their guy you just Valor and it's pretty much you know that's it so I really like that because that gives you the ability to out their uh, you know to stop their play and then proceed with yours maxi of course obvious you know you draw cards you know every time they special summon etc now another reason I don't feel that this deck is such a problem is because let's do the crazy thing let's take away Buster Dragon let's say Buster Dragon doesn't exist so let's take away Buster Dragon right now 
what does the deck do without Buster Dragon? The deck heavily relies on ABC Buster Dragon. That's its main strategy. But if you take away Buster Dragon, what are you left with? You are left with a strong but not invincible rank 4 deck. And we've, pl we've played those for years. Like, we know all about them. We know about Dino Rabbit. We know about Gear Gear. We know about any decks that played just r generic rank 4s, Evil Sworn, etc. That's basically what you're left with when you take away the Buster Dragon. So, what do I mean by that? Because they may say, well, Slim, that card's not banned. That card's not gone. No, but if we actually take that out of the equation and we realize that the deck is nothing but a rank 4 deck, the deck is not invincible. I think the deck is fantastic. I think the deck probably is the best deck right now. It's very consistent. It's very strong. But if you t if you account for the pr most problematic card in the deck, which is from the extra deck, which is the ABC Buster Dragon, and you build your deck to play around the ABC Buster Dragon, and you build your side deck to play around the ABC Buster Dragon, you should have success against this deck. I feel that there's a lot of options you can use against the Buster Dragon. I, I listed a couple down here. I always like to list Kaijus. I feel Kaijus are just some of the best as you, you might say, oh, but Slim, they're going to tag the thing out before we get the chance maybe yes maybe no there are some players who don't realize that you know you get if they don't tag out during standby or whatever you just you just literally just slap a kaiju over the buster dragon and that's it the abcs are banished buster uh, big guys in the grave nothing's coming back so pretty crazy but i think kaijus are just a great out they out boards in general they out rank fours that could be a problem etc so kaijus are just always obviously one of the best System Down is probably the MVP here because it doesn't matter what they do, they're getting their whole field slammed and their graveyard slammed. Best card, I don't need to explain it, pay a thousand, banish all their stuff, you win the game. Another card people brought to my attention was Imperial Iron Wall. Now, I don't know how I feel about this card. I feel like, you know, during Cosmo, it was the best card because they heavily relied on banishing. The thing is, is like, depending on what kind of deck you play, you don't want to hinder yourself by playing Imperial Iron Wall. I think Iron Wall is good because it will stop the banishing. However, it will not stop the rank fours. And here in the rank fours, I listed ones, other ones. Castell can bounce Iron Wall away. Girgigan X can still search. Dire Wolf is the main one. They're playing two copies of it. They can just destroy Iron Wall. So I don't think Iron Wall is that strong, but it is another option. I didn't include all the options because that's what I want you guys to do in the comments below let me know what uh cards you used uh in your main deck or side deck against um against abcs i feel cyber dragon's versatile i feel a lot of these cards are versatile it's a machine deck we've dealt with machine decks for years from gadgets to machina gadgets to gear gear we've dealt with machines over and over and over again format after format there's no reason why we can't deal with abcs so that's just my personal opinion i feel the deck is not a problem if you know how to play against it and if you actually really look at it and say when you take away the ABC Buster Dragon, I'm dealing with a rank 4 deck. If you can account for the ABC Buster Dragon, play around it, or get them to use up its effects so you can get over it, you're going to win. You're going to do fine. And even if you lose game 1, a lot of people take an auto loss game 1, your side deck should be there for you. I was watching uh, History of the Yu-Gi-Oh! player uh, on Glasgow Yu-Gi-Oh!'s channel. Shout out to you. Um, and Tyree Tinsley said something really interesting. He said that you play more games with your side deck than you do with your main deck. Because if you win game one, you're, you you know, you know use your main deck. But if game two and three exist, you have side deck cards in. You usually play more games over the course of a tournament with your side deck than you do your main deck. So in reality, it's become the fact that your side deck is so important. I feel that you should dedicate a lot of time to saying, okay, what are the decks I struggle against and how do I you know better my side deck to beat them and how do I side cards in that won't affect the engine of my deck and once you realize that I think that is like the key to success so that's just something I wanted to share with you guys but those are my personal opinions I feel ABC is a fantastic deck I feel it's probably the best deck right now and I feel it's the deck of choice for a lot of players and I feel that there are many routes you can go with it you can play the galaxy soldiers you can play you know whatever route you want but I feel like a lot of people are gonna stick to standard and like I said you just account for the buster dragon you're gonna be fine that's just my personal opinion let me know what you guys think please open a discussion in the comments below what cards do you use uh to take down abcs what cards do you feel are underrated that should be cited what are uh, ways that you combat the deck game one do you feel the deck's unbeatable because i sure don't i feel that the deck is just another rank four deck that has the access to abc buster dragon and we've played against decks like that for years so we should always be able to get over them i kind of look at it like how machina's had fortress i know it's a it's a small comparison because compared to by the effects but think about it they are a rank four deck that could summon this big 2500 beater out of nowhere so it's pretty crazy basically this is a rank four deck that can banish to summon the big guy out of nowhere i look at that as the same concept and when you take away that problem you see that it's nothing more than a rank four deck now granted rank fours are the best in the game 
and they're very versatile. But I feel that we've been playing against rank four so long that we should be able to get over them. So, anyways, that's my opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. I um, really just, you know, I wanted to come back and start talking about this. I'm really enjoying these discussions. If there's other things you want me to discuss, whether it be a deck, whether it be a card, etc., just let me know and I'll definitely bring it here to the channel. But anyways, in the comments below, let me know how you combat ABCs in any shape or form and how you uh, how you feel uh, side deck should evolve to, you know, account for this deck. I don't feel you should dedicate your whole side deck, but which, like, would you say are the top three to five cards you would cite in against this deck and why? So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.